everyone, and welcome to the Adam Josh Oral Brog, episode number 47. Uh, I have, to be honest with you, I have nothing planned or written down for this Adam Josh Oral Brog, but I did want to eat this ice cream cone and make a point of eating this ice cream cone on camera. It says uh, C-O-R on the side. I don't know if you've ever uh, seen that on anything, but it means that it's kosher. You see the Hebrew writing on that. They have it on Pepsi nowadays and Coca-Cola. So you know that your Pepsi and your Coca-Cola is kosher. I don't know what that's supposed to tell you. So this is a Klondike strawberry and vanilla thing. Um, it's sort of been really nice all week. Right now it's overcast out, but still warm. So this suits the weather, I suppose. Luckily I have my glasses on so I can, can read the writing on here. Ugh. I, uh, I bought this a while ago. Put it in the freezer. Oh, it's falling over. I've never had one of these before, so I'm not sure if I'm eating it right. I might have done it wrong already. You know, it's like a falafel where you're supposed to just peel off the top and eat the, eat the top, I don't know. It seems to be falling apart on me already. I saw it and I thought, well, I like strawberries. I like chocolate. This should be good. Aha! Uh -huh. hmm. It's falling apart already. <laughs> so how are you doing? How's your, how's your world? is not eating as neatly as I thought it would.
tell you a funny story. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. So, um, we bought a lawnmower last year, one of those ones that you uh, pull the lever and push it, and it, it cranks the motor on the wheels. Um, I've cut lawns actually when I was younger, like 12, 13 years old. That's how I'd get my cigarette money, I would cut lawns. So, uh, back when I smoked cigarettes, cigarettes! So, you know, I'm not adverse to cutting lawns, and uh, so uh, I cut, you know, whatever lawn needs to be cut. So I was cutting my, uh, my friend's lawn last year and uh, this year I was like you know what I don't know with the price of gas and all that you know I wasn't asking any money from him and I thought <clears throat> I thought you know if you're gonna give me any money it's not gonna be worth it because uh, you know what are you gonna pay me fifty dollars for cutting your lawn every time no of course not so long story short we winterized the lawnmower and uh, two ways you can do that, right? You can drain all the gas and all the oil out and just leave it in the shed. Or you can get the gas line antifreeze, top up the gas and put in a few drops of the gas line antifreeze and top up the oil and put in the uh, oil and gas line antifreeze again, or the antifreeze. So I got the stuff, topped it up, and that was the first time I've ever done that because I usually had the lawnmowers in the uh, garage or somewhere where like I have uh, two garages three look I mean I have a lot of garages that I can put stuff in you know like big ones um, like where I am right now there's a five car shop five bay shop and we have another one and then I have my own then we have like a personal one and then we have other storage areas like we run a roofing company too so we have a big shed that we just keep our crap in so there's lots of sheds is the short of it lots of places we can put them throughout this city and another one another city so i've never had to winterize a lawnmower before so this was the first time so i asked my my buddy can you run it with the gas that's been, you know, had the additive to it. And he said, I've never had any problems. So I drained out some of the oil because I topped it up, obviously, drained it out so it was level and then just started it. And uh, actually backing up, the guy, the friend who was lawn I was cutting brought me the lawnmower because he said, oh, it was smoking. I said, did you try to start it? Because I had the oil, like top right to the top, way too much oil. It was smoking like crazy. So I drained out the oil, ran it here, who's running fine, give it back to him, he gets back to his house. I don't know what happened in between there, here and there, but he got into a little bit of a fight about it. But apparently he tried to start his lawnmower and it seized on him and now he's already thrown it out. He took it to a mechanic and the mechanic said, yeah, it's garbage, so throw it out. So he's angry, you know, he was yelling at me and I was sort of, not yelling back, but sort of frustrated. Like common sense says, you know, check your friggin' oil before you start running it, check your levels. Well, you said you could run it with it. Yeah, but it, I didn't. I didn't say the. Oil, I didn't remember if I had topped up the oil, not topped up the oil. So anyway, long story short, lawnmower's gone. Now <clears throat> in the shop right now. So he comes in and he's like, "Here's a new lawnmower," and he thinks it's the same one as he bought before, and it's not. It's just a regular bush lawnmower. So he says, "Can you do me a favor? You know, I'm not mad or whatever. Just unwrap this, get it ready, and." And we'll talk about this year if you want to come cut my lawn like once a week or whatever. So uh, I unwrapped this lawnmower. It's in a box over there. I could show you, I suppose, but it's nothing to show. It's just a lawnmower in a box. Take my word for it. There's a lawnmower in a box over there. So I take it out, put the oil in it, put the gas in it, run it up. And then uh, he's like, oh, make sure it mulches. And I take a look at it. I'm like, there's no... There's no spout on this to shoot it out, you know, so it's if you run over a big chunk of grass It's gonna just turn off or whatever and he comes over and he looks at it. And he's like it doesn't push I said, Yeah, you bought a push lawnmower. It doesn't it doesn't have a motor assisted uh, push 
So well, I'll wrap it up. I'm gonna take it back. So I, my head kind of goes sideways. I'm like, all right, sure, man, whatever. We're all friends here. So we'll wrap it up. He's sitting in a box there, and he's gonna take it back. And I said, look, I'm going shopping with you from now on. You know, you're not gonna go buying these lawnmowers on your own. You don't even know what you want. So that's my lawnmower story. So we've ruined uh, we've ruined a four hundred and fifty dollar lawnmower and opened up another one, which we're gonna return and see what happens. Oh, I I wrapped up the box. And it looks pretty much like it did when he got it. In other news, <clears throat> it's been really nice. So I've been out on the on the roof and at the beach tanning. I don't know if you can tell. Not really. Pull my stuff a little bit. My back, not so much, but I it was burnt last week. And uh, I made sure to like take off my shirt and take off my pants just down on my boxers so my legs are even tanned. Let's see the legs. Oh, I can get them up here. Uh, no, they still sort of look pale, but. I'm gonna go do some more tanning when I can, you know. Instead of just having a farmer's tan. Yeah. So, whenever my friend comes back, then we'll take care of this lawnmower situation, I suppose. Well, that'll be it. What else can we tell you? Uh, the UAS, this band that you're listening to, they're playing in Sarnia, Sarnia apparently this weekend. I'm not going to go to the show, but you're more than welcome to. Underartificialskies.com I gotta go guitar shopping. I want a new guitar. I'm going to start playing some music again, guitar-wise. i got a whole bunch of songs I'm going to start working on. Maybe write a new album, I don't know. We'll see. Baby steps. <clears throat> I have all these ideas for songs. Uh, what else can we talk about on the Adam Josh Oral Brog? Uh, self-awareness they say that conscious consciousness uh, is self-aware like dolphins are aware of themselves and they see themselves in a mirror cats dogs it sort of defines consciousness being self-aware but if you're self-aware that you're self-aware that can sort of lead to arrogance you know, being self-aware is awesome. You look at dolphins and see how they're self-aware, and you say, that's awesome, that's a compliment. But if you say, I'm awesome, if you know that you're self-aware and you think it's awesome, that's conceit or arrogance, right? So, crazy land we live in. Don't ever think that you're awesome, because the man, you're supposed to feel humble and low all the time. You're, you're nothing. You're cheap. You're dirty. Other people can tell you you're awesome. You can't think you're awesome. You always have to think you're dirty and cheap. Got it. It's this duality of crazy land we live in. We have two hands and two arms. Left brain, right brain. It's supposed to be black or white. This side or that side. The world isn't circular. It's sided. This side or that side. When all else fails, turn to props. I still have my uh, Kid Step toothpaste box in here. I'm actually using the toothpaste, so nothing else to show you. Band-aids and bullets. All right, everybody. I guess uh, that wraps it up for this week.
I usually don't uh, brog on the weekends. And I'm uh, taking off out of town, so you kids take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks for watching the Adam Josh Oral Brog. Tell your friends to get a job. Brog being the uh, patents on the past tense of past tense of brag. <clears throat> so if I'm aware that I'm trying to be clever, that's being self-aware of my cleverness, which is arrogance, right? Because I'm trying to be clever doesn't mean I am clever. And I'm aware that I'm trying to be clever. And I'm aware that I'm aware of trying to be clever. I'm aware that I'm recording right now. And I'm aware that I'm aware of recording right now, trying to be clever while I'm recording. This is... And while I'm aware of all that, I'm aware that we're on this uh, 7 billion passenger spaceship hurtling through space, following our sun, which is hurtling around the giant black hole of the uh, center of the universe, being aware of all these things all at once. Hmm. Aware. It's 2011, eh? Where's our spaceships and uh, rocket packs and hoverboards? Alright, I think I'm done. Peace out, everybody. Have a good weekend.